Hey everyone, this is Josh with Josh Wright Piano TV. Today's episode has to do with the importance of recording yourself when you play uh, and practice. I remember when I was a young kid, um, I bought this really, uh, to me it was very expensive, it was a couple hundred dollars and I had saved up allowances and all this stuff for this uh, recording equipment and it used like cassette tapes and things like that, but it was a pretty nice setup. And I thought that was the greatest thing. Um, you know, I valued that so much. And to this day, I still value like this microphone and the interface that I'm recording on. Like those are some of my most prized possessions because it really does help you become a much better pianist. And I don't think any of us do it enough. Um, I know for me, I always think, oh, I gotta get the piece better before I start recording myself. Don't think that way. Start recording today. It gives you instantaneous feedback and it's usually extremely discouraging to record because you think you sound better than you actually do. And that's true of every single one of us. I know that, you know, one of my idols, like just like the a person I admire more than anyone is uh, in in the piano field is Sergei Babayan and he himself has told me like, "Oh, I don't like to be recorded." Um because it is so much pressure. But just get in the routine of recording yourself daily even. I remember when I was 12 to 14 is when I, I got that equipment when I was 12. And I think I spent half of my recording sessions listening to myself, listening back. Um, I was playing things like Gaspar de la Nuit by Ravel, which you might think, oh, what idiot teacher would give you um, I, Gaspar when you're that young and my teacher was so smart her name Susan Duelmeyer she gave me those things so that by the time I was 17 and 18 I was winning competitions with those pieces um, you've got to start young but it, it was so critical that I was listening to my sound every day so that when I started playing You could get that quivering figure in the right hand. Um, you can listen for warmth of sound. You should be listening for balance. You should be listening for clear pedals, articulation. All these things are so important. And you have to be your own best teacher. Stop relying on your teacher to fix your mistakes. This is something that I teach my own students. I always tell them, uh, quoting Heinrich Neuhaus, I want to get rid of, not word for word, but I wanna get rid of you guys as soon as possible. Now, it's gonna take me a while to get rid of you because I want you to know everything I know. But uh, that's what that was not Neuhaus's uh, philosophy. Some teachers just hold on to students forever, even beyond their capabilities, especially these neighborhood teachers that, you know, they know how to play a few church hymns and then they think they're qualified to be a piano teacher. It's just absolutely despicable um, that they hold on to students so long. I don't mind at all them starting a student out and teaching them good f basics, but it's so important to not rely solely on your teacher. You you listen to your teacher, you do everything they say, you try everything out, but then you go home and you do the work and you diagnose, you're the doctor, you're fixing your own issues, and then your teacher enhances things that you may not have thought of. A great example of this is my student, Michelle. She lives in Alabama, I teach her on Skype, and one thing that we have been going over, uh, she's been doing great work on this Rachmaninoff Prelude in G Major, Opus 32, number five. One thing that we have discussed for the last month and a half or two months is get that left hand softer. And each lesson she got a little bit better. And I said, you really need to start recording yourself. And so she did. She's a very diligent student. She does exactly what I ask her to. And she came back today and it sounded very much like what I just played. Before it was...
Now I understand different pianos are of different qualities. This is a Hamburg Steinway, has a great soft register, just amazing to the touch. Um, I think it's a 1978, but basically all original parts. The person who owned it before, I I think they barely ever used it, which is great for me. Um, so, But it's so important uh, to do that because she said, oh my gosh, like I couldn't hear uh, that I was playing that loud. She said, I thought, oh, my left hand's so beautiful and silky and soft. And then I'd listen back and it sounded like I was pounding it. So then I went back, this is her, speaking and she said I went back and I played it as if I wasn't even pressing the keys anymore it felt like I wasn't even playing them and all of the sudden sorry she got that sound. And one thing that all of my teachers have stressed especially Bob Ayan was get soft at the ends of your phrases, but Babayan reached greater heights than I really ever experienced um, so far as demands on yourself. He would say, I want it to completely evaporate to, to the point where you can barely even hear it, but you could. it was still well balanced. It was still a rich tone. So for instance, one thing you could do is, Is that the silkiest, smoothest texture you could create? Maybe you just do that over and over. And then keep going. I didn't like my G at the bottom. searching. It's a quest. If you are practicing and you're like, oh, I just got to do this a bunch of times, the repetition to get it into my hands. There is some validity to that when you're first learning it. But once you've got it in your hands, um, you do not just sit and do mindless repetitions. Search for things, record, listen back. If you're spending half of your time listening to yourself playing, I guarantee you will increase in skill by more than the 50% time. You'll, you'll increase, you know, two, three, four hundred percent more if you're listening to half of your recording or your practice session than just playing. Now, there are passages that are just high maintenance passages that you've just got to work out. And uh, I will be hitting that in my Opus 10 number two video, <laughs> um, pro practice video, which I've been working towards for quite some time. But because I totally suck at that piece and I'm gonna try to finish all the Chopin etudes by this year's end. But I hope today just shed some light on how important recording is. Go out, uh, um, one thing, I will link this in the comments section below. This is like 100 or $120 on Amazon. I really don't think you can beat quality. This is a Yeti Silver Edition um, microphone by Blue, uh, that's the company. I'll link it down below with an Amazon link if you want to order that. Um, this is an AKG 414 microphone, and this is about $900, and this is like $100. And for practice sessions, you won't notice much difference between the two. Um, these I use for my YouTube videos, but I also use them to like record my professional albums. So I figure why not use them for YouTube as well. But you'll get a great sound out of the, the Yeti as well. So if any of you have any questions, my email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. Thanks for joining me today. Good luck in recording your practice sessions. See you later.